Hey, what's going on everyone? So Linus from Linus Tech Tips, he had hands on with the Steam Deck. He went to Valve's offices and had a bit of a play around with it. Now he also brought his a &Neo with him, which was a pretty smart thing to do because now we have a direct comparison between the two systems and we can see what the performance gap is between the two. And what we can actually do now is look up performance of various games on the A and Neo and then estimate or speculate what that performance might be on the Steam Deck. And that's what we're going to do in this video. Okay, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and subscribe to the channel for more videos like this. And we also have a Discord server, so come along and join us there. And I'll leave a link in the description below. So I'm going to run you a clip from Linus's video on the GPU performance of the Steam Deck. Now, I don't think you need to watch that video first. I think you can watch this one first because this one is just about the GPU performance. And then later on, you can go and watch Linus's video where he covers everything else about the Steam Deck. But uh, I'll run that little clip from Linus's video first. So uh, let me play that for you now. Looking out into the skybox, I don't have a lot of character models on screen or anything like that, but Based on this very early hardware, running very early software, I would be surprised if we don't see somewhere in the neighborhood of a 50% performance uplift over a similarly equipped device. And what we know based on what Valve has told us about the internal battery and the estimated battery runtime is that the power envelope of these two chips is fairly similar. So in that clip, Linus was playing Doom Eternal and on the ANEO, he was getting about 37 to 38 FPS. On the Steam Deck, he was getting about 58 FPS. So approximately 50% more performance for the same total power draw. And that's really great news for PC portable fans who've always been asking for more GPU processing power. Now let's talk a little bit about the differences between the two systems. So the ANEO is actually six Vega compute units and the Steam Deck is actually eight RDNA 2 compute units. Now when the Steam Deck was first announced and they announced that it had those RDNA 2 compute units, I made a video speculating on the performance difference between Vega and RDNA 2. And finally we have an actual comparison between the two. And so uh, let me put up a little uh, graphic here. And as you can see, if you have six Vega compute units versus eight Vega compute units, that's a difference of about 33% of a GPU performance if you utilize those two extra cores. So let's assume that you do. Well, the difference between Vega to RDNA 2, in that video, I speculated that it would be about 20 to 25% extra performance between Vega and RDNA 2. And I think that's what you're actually seeing here between uh, these two systems playing Doom Eternal, that you're roughly getting about 50% performance improvements. Okay, let's take a look at A and Neo performance results. Now, if the Steam Deck is 50% better than the A and Neo, then that's a very easy calculation for you guys to work out. So I'll let you guys do that. I'm not gonna put up the expected or the estimated frame rate for the Steam Deck. And I think the uh, frame rates are gonna vary game to game anyways. So there's no point for me to put that up. Now I've got three reviews here. One is from Gamers Nexus. The second one is from Ultrabook, which is a website. And I've also got a review or a benchmark video from ETA Prime, which is a YouTuber I'm sure you guys have heard of. I'll leave links for all three in the description below. Let's take a look at the Gamers Nexus results and they tested three games. Each one they tested at a high power preset and a low power preset. Now what's the difference between the two? Well, these are like power management states that they can run at at these presets. So the high power preset can run at 18 watts, 25 watts, and 20 watts, and the low power preset can run at 12 watts, 18 watts, and 15 watts. If you wanna save some battery life, you would obviously run it at the lower power presets. Now, don't compare too hard between the A and Neo at 25 watts and the Steam Deck at 15 watts because that's not really comparable. Uh, that's not apples to apples. So you wanna be comparing it when the power draws are the same. So later on, when I show you the Ultrabook and the ETA Prime reviews, they're at about 15 watts. So that is comparable. But I just thought I would show you these Gamers Nexus results anyways. 
With Fortnite low power preset at high settings, this had an average frame rate of 35.4 FPS. With the high power preset, this had 39.7 FPS. Now we don't know if it's running at 12 watts or 15 watts, like I said, but let's just assume it was 15. If it was 15, then the frame rate on the Steam Deck would be roughly about 55 to 60 FPS. Now with Rainbow Six Siege low power preset, ultra settings this ran at a frame rate of 63.3 fps with the high power preset this ran at 69 fps so this is a game that's not exactly very demanding because you can run it at ultra settings and still get above 60 fps on the a and neo so you'll definitely be able to do that on the steam deck and what i would do then would be uh, i would tune it a little bit more and uh, try to reduce the power usage so that you can conserve battery life now with rocket league uh, the low power preset max settings, this ran an average frame rate of 76.5 FPS with a high power preset, this ran at 77.6 FPS. So increasing the power doesn't really do that much for Rocket League, so there must be some other bottleneck there other than the GPU. But uh, again, I would probably run this uh, at a lower power usage on the Steam Deck. Uh, what, rather than wasting all of those frames, uh, you can actually get more battery life. So next we have Ultrabook, and the first game they tested was Star Wars Squadrons. It runs at high settings at 55 FPS. No Man's Sky, standard settings at 43 FPS. Doom Eternal, medium at 50 FPS. Now there's a bit of a difference between Linus's results and Ultrabook's results for Doom Eternal, but we don't really know exactly what settings they use, so that could be the difference here. So Valheim, they got 25 FPS at low settings, and for the other games, uh, they didn't actually specify what settings they use. So for Dragon Quest 11s, they had an average frame rate of 40 FPS, Jedi Fallen Order was about 36 FPS, and Power Wash Simulator, if um, I don't actually know what that game is, but that ran at 58 FPS. Okay, next we have ETA Prime who did a benchmark video for the A and Neo. So let's run through some of these results. So Halo 3 on medium low settings got an average frame rate of 73 FPS. Overwatch medium settings 72 FPS. Dauntless medium to low settings at 62 FPS. Genshin Impact medium to low at 60 FPS. Now for these four games, what I would actually do is with Steam Deck, uh, you'll actually get a much better frame rate so it might be in the hundreds you could actually increase the settings here to say high settings or maybe if you wanted to conserve battery life you could actually reduce the power usage of the steam deck and then get 60 fps because if you use the steam deck over 100 fps you're not really going to see it on screen anyway it might feel a little bit smoother but generally speaking uh there's really no need to run the system with a 60 hertz screen with games at over 100 fps so next we have rocket league so that's at medium settings at 100 fps warframe medium settings at 90 fps and world of warcraft high at 100 fps so for those games as well i would probably just lower the amount of power used so that you can get more battery life so next we have some games that are a little bit more demanding borderlands 3 at low settings has an average frame rate of 44 fps ms flight sim low settings at 20 fps so not really that playable on the a and neo cyberpunk 2077 at low settings with an average frame rate of 22 fps and red dead redemption 2 which was a benchmark so they didn't specify what settings was used this had an average frame rate of 36 fps so these games will perform better on the steam deck but it's not going to be an experience where you're going to be blown away by it because these are really at low settings and for example ms flight sim if you're 50 percent better than this you're still at around 30 fps anyway so I just want to touch on one more aspect of Linus's video and I don't want to steal too much of his video. You can go and check that video out for yourself. But I thought there was a really important part in his video about temperatures. So just want to bring that up uh, and show everybody. So on the A&Neo, the hottest part of the device was 46.4 degrees. Um, where he's actually got to point it right in the middle of the device is actually 38 degrees. So for the Steam Deck, the hottest part is 55.1 degrees. I'm going to assume that's the processor. And in the middle of the screen, that's at around 48 degrees. And where you're actually going to be holding device, that looks like it's going to be a lot cooler. So I think it's going to be fine to hold the Steam Deck. 
Now, just as a matter of comparison, because obviously there aren't too many people who have held an A and Neo, and obviously the Steam Deck is not out yet, so we don't really know what it's like to hold those devices. I have a review from Gamers Nexus on the Nintendo Switch, so a lot of people have held that device. Now, it says here that the Nintendo Switch, the processor runs at about 60 degrees so very similar to what we see in the Steam Deck now running at 53 degrees so you could say that both systems were going to be fairly comparable between the two now obviously the Nintendo Switch is a lot smaller so it may run hotter um, so I think if you're comfortable with the Nintendo Switch you should be fine with the Steam Deck in terms of temperatures for the device Okay, so I hope you enjoyed that look at the GPU performance and also the thermal temperatures. The Linus video goes into more detail about a lot of other different things about the Steam Deck, so make sure you go and check that video out as well. And that's going to be it for this video. Um, if you like this video, make sure to hit the like button and also subscribe to the channel for more videos like this, and I'll see you in the next one.